but the one who comes to the rescue. And it's in this season when we know that he is our one and only rescuer. He can bring us to the point of no return. And that's when he says return. He brings us to the point of no return. And that's when he says return. Shuva. Shuva Yisrael. Ad Adonai Elohecha. Return, O Israel, to the Lord your God. And that's the season we're in. You know, at Rosh Hashanah, the Day of Trumpets, traditionally, is a time when, uh, in Jewish tradition, the Book of Life is opened. And God makes a determination who's going to live for the next year. Now, in Messianic Judaism, it's like, no, that's not true. It's the Lamb's Book of Life. And that's the, the, the Lamb's Book of Life is very different. That is an eternal Book of Life. Right? That's whoever the Lamb has written. It's the eternal Book of Life. But this traditional Book of Life, it's, it's not listed in Scripture that this happens on Rosh Hashanah. But Scripture does speak about a Book of Life, for sure. Moses said, take me out of it. So there is a book of life. So in this time, traditionally, it says the books are open and Adonai makes a decision who is going to live and who is going to die this coming year. That's something that is completely out of our control. Completely out of our control. So in this season that we're in, we get to a place where we allow Adonai to activate, to wake up in the boat, to wake up in the vessel. Because we have nothing of our own that we can rely on. But his grace and his mercy. Have you ever been in a place where you had to rely on his grace? We spoke about grace a couple weeks ago. Grace, in order for grace to be activated, you had to do something wrong. Because now that you've done something wrong, how is he going to act? Is he going to act with grace or with punishment? So did anybody ever in their life have to rely on his grace? Like, oh my gosh, I messed up. May I share how I messed up last weekend? What did you say? You know the story. All right. I messed up last week. I wasn't here. I was, Susie and I were ministering in music in New Jersey and Pennsylvania. I uh, was not here, and I messed up. I did something wrong, and I had to repent. She's like, I just, I just said, okay, we didn't do this. You know what I'm So here's the, it is finished, but I want to share it, and I want to bring it back to like this place of having to rely on God's grace. Okay. So here's what happened. You may think it's like, Rabbi Brian screwed up. That's never funny. You might find it kind of funny. Okay, so here's what happened. So we were in uh, New, uh, New Jersey and Pennsylvania, right? And you know we have three cats. Adonai has not blessed us with the uh, human kind of child yet. So we have cats. Um, so, you know, so we have one feline who has to get a, an insulin shot every twice a day into the neck that we've been doing for some years now. And now we think, it's it, 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 So now we have, so then we have uh, Jonah, and now we have um, this little kitten called Boaz, who just got snipped. That's unrelated to the story. Boaz gets into everything. He's a kitten. He just jumps everywhere. Okay? So, you know, we're in this place. We're like, well, we don't know what to do. So we're going we're gonna to put Ezra into a, a, a kennel so we can get a shot. And we're going to bring the others to a friend. And, you know, and Susie's like, I just wish we could bring them because I'm worried about them. So I'm like, I have an idea. We're going to New Jersey. The rabbi of the congregation in New Jersey put us up in a house. That's where we were staying. Let's just ask him if we could bring the cats. You with me? Yeah. So I asked them, can we bring the cats? He said, nah, I don't think it's going to work out. We don't really want the cats in this place. Aww. So then, because it was more of a public house, that's where they have their after-service gatherings and things like that. So then I had this wonderful idea. 
I went at, hmm. <laughs> There's going to be some people here that are not going to let me get away with this. I know it. There's, so, I went, hmm. My mother is in Israel right now. <laughs> I had the key to her house. Susie, you and I never do anything mischievous. <laughs> Why don't we, I have the key. I know the alarm code. Why don't you spend the night at my mother's house with the cats? She'll never know. <laughs> <laughs> so she's like, so she pulled a Pontius punch pilot. I'm washing my hands. <laughs> Blood is not on my hands. <laughs> I'm like, come on, Susie, this is a no-brainer. We can go in, we'll be in, we'll be out, she'll never know, we'll be done. And, and you may be like, this is so stupid, why didn't you just ask your mother? Call her up, send her an email, ask her if you can, you know, go and spend the night with the cats. Why didn't you ask? I'll tell you why I didn't ask. Because she probably would have said no. <laughs> Secondly, my mother's very complicated. If she doesn't want to... <laughs> With Jewish guilt, they go into it. Why let you do this and you don't let me come over? <laughs> right? That's number one. And then you're like, well, that's so silly. Why don't you just get a hotel? There's plenty of hotels that accept pets. Why don't you just get a hotel? I'll tell you why I don't mean to get a hotel. Because I'm a cheap actor. That's why we didn't get a hotel. <laughs> Like, let's just bring the cat into her house. Okay. She's just washing her hands. So we're driving to New Jersey. The plan's all set. Go to my mother's house. I got the key. I got the code. No brainer. <laughs> so we're pr pretty much approaching the house. And then Susie reminds me, doesn't your mother have like extensive like oh. tchotchkes and figurines and everything like all throughout the house? Oh, no. And I'm like, oh my. Gosh, I didn't think of that part. So we were like arriving at the house, and she's right. My mother has expensive figure, like Judaica figurines, you know, like on every shelf, it's like a whole bunch of stuff. And we've got this new kitten who jumps on everything. Okay? He just, if he decides, like, oh, look, cat toys. <laughs> and jump on the shelf. I didn't even have a, I didn't have a, 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 you know, broken, expensive stuff that belonged to her all over the floor. It'd be nothing I could do about it. Not to mention the plants. Okay. <laughs> Not to mention the plants. So then we had to, because again, the first thing that the kitten saw were the plants. So like, he went right over to a plant. I'm like, okay, this is not going to be good. I got to take the plant. I hide it in the bathroom. He goes to another plant, a fake plant. I got to take that one. We hide it in the bathroom. And I'm looking at all these figurines. I'm like, oh my gosh, I am so dead. And I go, Susie, can't we just lock him in the bathroom or lock him in a bedroom? She goes, I'm not locking my cat in the bathroom or a bedroom. I'm not going to do that to him. This was your idea. So we go to no, we, we leave him there, and now it's time to go to the Friday night booking in Pennsylvania. And I'm like, my heart is, you know, I'm like, I am so dead. The only thing between this, between this cat jumping and breaking my mother's stuff, which I would have no excuse for, and not, is God's decision. It is strictly his decision, his providence, his divine providence. If he allows this to happen, which I deserve, or he doesn't allow it. So I'm like, oh my gosh, this is so terrible. Then I get to the congregation, the rabbi, shalom, brother, like, oh, shalom. And my, my, in my back of my head, I'm like, oh gosh, I hope the cat doesn't jump and break this up. <laughs> we're, we're singing, enemy scatter, enemy scatter. Out of the back of my head, I'm like, oh gosh, I hope the cat is not going to jump on break over Judea. You know, I have to do a message there. I'm preaching, you know, everybody's like, oh, I'm in, I'm in, I'm in. In the back of my head, I'm like, oh my God, the cat, you know, just the cat. We go back, I open the door, I just check, and there's nothing broken. So we go to sleep, 
They wake up the next morning and we have to go to the other congregation in New Jersey and they were singing, we're, you know, if you don't mind broken things. I don't sing a broken thing song. There is a broken thing. You can't my heart if you don't mind broken things. Susie, no, 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 no. Wrong song. <laughs> so we finally leave there. I go back to the house. I look in and all the stuff is exactly where it should have been. Oh, wow. Hey, you like that, huh? Yeah. <laughs> so we get the heck out of there as fast as possible. All the other aspects of my plan worked. I had the litter box on the linoleum floor because I knew that was easier to clean. We put everything back where it was. We had to turn the water on when we were there because they sure you turn the water off. I had to turn it back off, we had to lock it. That's why I set the house up and I leave and I'm like, Father, I am so sorry. I repent. These whole What's, what's the word? Heist? What's the word for doing something like that? Like, there's, a, there's a word, like you're doing something wrong, illegal. Or a caper? A caper. These type of capers really don't agree with my spirit, out I? I am I am really sorry. And for the moving forward, I will not put money over doing the right thing. Next time they go to Aunt TV Shell. Next time they go to Aunt TV Shell. All right. So that was it. And thank you, Adonai, that your plan was for these things not to be broken. And I know what's happening. So you gotta repent to your mother. Yeah, that's right. But you are correct. <laughs> you are correct. All right. The only reason I shared that is because I got a taste of what it means to to have. There's nothing I could have done to stop the cat from jumping. It was purely divine providence. And that's what almost did jump. Yeah, like right at the end, he's like, I think I'm gonna jump over here. I'm like, no, I have to tackle poor little Ezra. <laughs> So anyway, the only reason I share that here is because I was in this place where I could rely on nothing but God's choice. Whether it was going to happen or not, there was nothing I could do about it. And I went, Adonai, I trust you. Whatever you, whatever your choice is, is the choice, and I, I have put my trust in that. And there is a time, I believe, that Adonai brings us all to that point. And everybody, when they're at that point, and there's nothing you can do to affect a situation any longer with your creative, strong selves, you say, God, I can't do this. And Yeshua, who's sleeping in the vessel, wakes up. And we rely on him and his sovereignty and his providence to work all things out for good, whatever his choice is. So this is the season that we were in of approaching the time where we open our hearts and we allow the great physician to do open heart surgery. You're going through something in your lives where you're just at the end of your rope, good. That's where he brings us in this season. Let it happen. Put down your own strength and let the one who is divine navigate the situation. Let him say, peace be still to the storm. Because there's nothing you can do to calm this one, as great of a person as you are. We lift this up to you in Yeshua's name. Amen. Amen. All right, the Torah is full of misdirections, or just lefts, rights, ups, downs. I believe in this Torah portion, you'll see one law, and the next